Hey squad, what's going on? Rich Ryan here. Today we're talking about Decafit and in particular the box jump overs for Decafit. I'm going to break down the three different pieces of the jump overs and we're going to call them step overs from here on out and different ways you can put that in practice for your training. So before we get into the video, make sure you give me a subscribe so you can get all the newest hybrid training information into your feed, whether we're talking about different styles of training or how to or how to videos to get through the different stations. Hit us a like and subscribe so you can get all that and make sure you check out some different training programs from Reinforced Running. We have a 12 week High Rocks and 12 week Decafit program available right now to purchase. Take a look at the link down in the notes. All right. Let's get into it. So the first part that you want to address when doing the box step forwards is just how you're setting up. So you want to set up laterally next to the box with a bit of a closed angle, having your hips pointed toward the box just slightly. So this, for two reasons, is beneficial. You're going to move the 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 stress of the movement from things like your glute med and like your lateral movements and put them more into your quads and glutes there could be two chains of thoughts here where if you're using less quad and less glute you'll have more for the running but you should be conditioned and you should be strong enough to handle 20 box step overs without fatiguing yourself but putting yourself at a closed angle will give you the stronger muscles to drive through the box and also it's going to help your line of sight being able to see the box with each step is pretty important going lateral side to side it's going to it could add an extra element of stress to the movement in just in terms of visually not being able to see where you're stepping and a lot of time people kind of step up and not get enough of a step over and kind of hit the side and stumble a little bit it's going to cost you quite a bit so turning a little bit just so you can see the box better is uh, an advantageous way to begin for this. As you descend off of the box, I would recommend to kind of spin and turn so you land at that closed angle again. This will save time and will help you when you're at that bottom from the rebound to get back up and move smoothly throughout. Again, you can move side to side laterally, but and it might be a little bit more efficient in terms of without not needing to turn that hip angle. But just driving and turning is going to put you in the position that you need to be as you begin each rep. Turning your hips to the top might take a little bit of practice and coordination and a little bit of rhythm, which not everybody has, but with practice, it will become kind of second nature for you. The second piece to consider is driving hard through the top leg that is placed on the box. So this is not a box jump, so it's not a complete plyometric movement but it's kind of a single leg box jump from that perspective. And you wanna make sure that you're driving through the top leg and not focusing more on jumping off of the back. When you drive through that top leg, you're going to spring yourself into a better position further across the box so that you're moving less and you're, cl you're clearing the box in a faster amount of time. So step up with that front leg, drive as hard as you can through that front leg. And as you explode over the box, your trail leg should probably land pretty close or to the other side of the box. You should almost clear the box just in that movement. The standard says that you have to have both feet touch the top of the box. It doesn't have to be simultaneously. So you can actually drive that front leg up and over as your trail leg comes across and kind of drags or taps across the top. It doesn't necessarily need to be a step, step, uh, down, down, or a step, step, and then, and then down. It can kind of be like a skip over the top and that's what you'll see some of the, the higher end athletes doing is just kind of gliding along the top and that's because they're driving really hard through that top leg to create that momentum to clear the box the third and probably the most important tip for the box step overs to to make your your time faster is to use the elastic energy on the rebound to continue to spring back and forth over the box so this is mostly on the descent from the top of the box. As your front leg comes across and your trail leg comes back, your front leg will be on the ground first. From there, you want to do a small hop. And that's what, what you're going to do is create elastic energy throughout your Achilles as you drive and pops back up like a slingshot. So that's kind of how your Achilles works. It gets loaded and then it fires back. So if we step over and don't do that hop, we lose that momentum, we lose that uh, elastic energy that is free for us. So it comes over your your front leg that has cleared the box, which will be your trail leg on the back on the on the way over, steps, your second foot comes down, another step, and then step up, 
step over, bounce, bounce, bounce. So it's really kind of a bouncing back and forth. And this is critical when it comes to increasing your efficiency over the box. It'll make it much easier, much faster to get up and over each and every, and every time. If you step over and you stop that momentum, you're gonna to have to restart each time, which will be costly in terms of, of efficiency and of the amount of time it's taking to clear the box. So again, this is much more of a rhythm and making sure that you're practicing getting up and over the thing and being able to bounce on each side. So in terms of training, this is just repetition, getting better, getting faster, getting quicker going over it. So I would do these style of box step overs two to three times a week without needing to overload, just so you can get the movement down. This isn't necessarily a, 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 an issue of strength or of endurance because it's not a high number. It's not a very demanding movement. It's more just the efficiency of movement. So you can do it a little bit more often because it's more of a skill than that you'll, and you won't need to recover as much from the strength side of things. Single leg movements and plyometric movements obviously would be helpful for something like this. Doing lunges, doing loaded step ups, and but once you have the available strength for your your ability level to get over the box, it's going to be more about the coordination and and practicing going through. So there you have it. Those are the three tips to improve your box step overs for Deca Fit. If you like this video, hit me with a like. Get a give me a subscribe so you can get all the newest information about hybrid racing, high rocks, Deca Fit directly into your feed. Please take a look at the 12 week training programs we have for High Rocks and DecaFit. And you can also take a look at our group training program that is a continuous progression where we take all the information that we talk about on this page and put it into one specific training plan so that you can crush your next hybrid event. All right, we'll talk to you soon.